Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in to another video. Most of you know we are in a new RV and a bigger RV and with that bigger RV comes bigger storage. Yeah, a lot more space and we've always shopped at Costco but we've never been able to buy their toilet paper products. So based on a recommendation from our friends John and Peter who just wrote an article about this Kirkland's brand toilet paper. Uh, they said they've been using it for almost 20 years. And so we're pretty excited to try it because we've been using Scott's 1000 for the past almost three years. And it's, it's horrible. It is, it is time for something new. We're excited to get uh, not only more space, bigger rolls, but also uh, the two ply. <laughs> so we'll link that article down below if you want to check that out. But in this video, we are going to compare our old toilet paper to this new toilet paper. And we're going to do a couple of the tests that you've probably seen on RV channels where they shake them up and try all different types of toilet paper. So what we're going to do is we're going to do one shake test, one just toilet paper in water, and then we're going to do a little bit of the RV black tank juice with water and see if that helps dissolve the toilet paper quicker. First things first, here is the Scott's 1000. It is a single one ply. We've talked about this in previous videos in our van and Aaron would joke by saying, if you look at this wrong, it will disintegrate right in front of you. And it is horribly thin. I hated it. I would often have like a second roll for going number one and just for like something more comfortable and then we would flush this for number two. When I would have the other roll for number one, I would always use that in the waste bin. So what we're trying to do now is upgrade and still be able to flush it. So with the um, Scots, you can get this anywhere. We would literally find it at Walmarts, grocery stores. It's the next comparable to a straight up RV flushable without having the RV branding on it. So that is, this is not marketed as RV toilet paper, but it is one of the few single plies out there that is septic safe and it's very flushable in an RV. Next, we're gonna look at this Kirkland's brand. Which we should point out this little thing here in the corner that says thicker now ever than before. And we're not sure if they've changed the formula, if this is gonna be different. So that's kind of why we're not just taking John and Peter's word for it, that we're just gonna switch. We wanna do a little testing ourselves. Although I would have liked to have just used the easy way and been lazy, but we're gonna hopefully be able to use this no matter what. I think it's gonna be just fine. But straight away, you are upgrading to a two-ply, woohoo, which is awesome. Nobody likes one-ply toilet paper, it sucks. Let's just be honest with each other. So the two-ply, right away, it feels better. I can even see some lint fibers going in the air. Here's your one-ply versus your two-ply. You can literally see through the Scots 1000. Probably won't be able to see much of a difference this way. <laughs> it's thinner. But it's, it's double. It's thinner. Um, like, this is kind of just like a tissue paper that you would find in a gift wrap. This definitely has more girth to it. Definitely feels softer. If you had to choose one to blow your nose, you'd want the softer one. So let's get into the testing. These are our containers we're going to use. I think Aaron designated these for the shakers. Yeah, we're pretty limited on <laughs> supplies living in, in the RV. We don't have an assortment of mason jars to choose from for this experiment. So as usual, we're gonna just be resourceful with what we have. We have these nice Dometic cups that we will be using for the soak test. Yep. And then the third version that Aaron wanted to do with the toilet chemical additive will be in these paper bowls. I was a little bit nervous. I was like, is that going to eat through the papered bowls? He laughed at me. He said, no, it's fine. So here we are. These are what we will be working with. First, we're going to start with putting in eight ounces of water in each container. So the liquid is the same in every single one. We've been using this Camco TST for many years. We really like it. It smells good, it works great, 
And so we're just gonna put uh, a little, what, teaspoon in each uh, bowl of water. And I have no idea how accurate that proportion is to what's really going on in our black tank, but for this test, that's what we're gonna do. I do think this stuff makes a big difference. Like if you do not have this in your tank, you will start to smell urine. It says it breaks down waste and tissue. I believe it. Let's see how good she is at this. <laughs> Zero confidence in my skills. We have our toilet paper ready for each brand. We're going to use two squares. So we have Scott's here, super thin, and then the Kirkland here, which is twice as thick. And going in, I do do a slight fold on it. We have one of each. I'm starting my timer and it's gonna go in there. And then same deal, one of each and on there. We have been soaking for five minutes. Visually, nothing looks a whole lot different on those, but we're gonna get into the shaking tests. So we got the Kirklands, we got the Scots. We're gonna close the lid on it and we are going to shake them for about 10 seconds, starting now. Okay, now we're gonna see what we got going on in here. Ooh, that kind of broke up nicely. I'm assuming that's the Scots. That is the Scots. No, this is the Scots. This oh. is the Kirkland. Oh wow, that did break up right away. Yeah. I'm actually kind of amazed. This is the Scots. Barely any clumps. It's not even clumps on my spoon. It's just like parts of it. Yeah. This one has larger parts of it but it still broke up pretty good. Yeah. Definitely disintegrated. Yeah. Yeah, it just, it needs to like not stay in clumpy balls where it can clog up into, you know, the shoe. Yeah. You don't want that. So on the ones that have soaked, I don't think that they're going to just disintegrate by soaking. So I would say it'd be just a fair test to do a spoon and see how it breaks up. Well, I was hoping that that extra RV septic juice was gonna break it up right away or, or show some signs of breaking it up. But even the Scots is still, and maybe it would over time. Yeah. That's the Scots. We could just try to pull it out of each one and see how it holds up, starting with the water. Yeah. You wanna do that? So it's been seven minutes and we have no patience to run the test any longer. So, Did you turn the air conditioner off? You, you can if you want to. Might be a little quieter. Okay, this should sound better. Yeah, so we'll start with the Scots. Held together. But if you do a little zhush, see what that looks like. This, a little bit clumpier. Does it break up when you do that? I can't quite see. Um, yeah. Kind of? Yeah, it does. This I don't really have a lot of room to wiggle in there. But it definitely is fragile. Mm -hmm. I must say that using two squares of each kind is somewhat inaccurate because that's like four squares compared yeah. to two squares of Scots. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to use, it's not going to be a two to two ratio in real life. Like you use twice as much Scots in order to get the job done than you do of the Kirklands. Yeah. So really a true test would have been four plies or four plies of each, which would have been four sheets of Scots, two sheets of Kirkland, but we're not going to go brain damage over this experiment. Yeah, so I think the bottom line is it does need some agitation to to uh, make it 
fall apart like that. Yeah. Now, when you dump the tank, is that a natural agitation just because gravity? No, I'd say if you're not driving at all, then you're not going to have any agitation. It's just going to sit in your tank. But maybe sitting in the tank for days or weeks with the septic um, Camco juice might actually work. I don't know. Yeah, and then the constant flushing and like water coming into the tank probably slightly agitates it. Yeah, that probably does a little bit. But overall, how do you feel about the shaker test? Because the shaker test is the most indicative of how this is going to be. Yeah, for us, like boondocking and driving to the RV dump. And so I'd say it's safe to use. Let's yes. switch. Yes. Congrats. We now, now we have, just need to squirrel all this away. Now I have a lifetime supply of toilet paper over there. Wonderful. I'm ready for it. What a fun little experiment. So here we are one month later and I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on how it's been going with this toilet paper. We've been using it every day and we've actually been in the RV park most of the time. This was a longer stint. We were getting our solar situation figured out which I finally got installed. So you saw us talk about how without agitation the toilet paper wasn't breaking down and I think I even made the comment where uh, in an RV park, it's not going to break down at all because the tank's not moving. Well, every I flushed it, you know, once a week, or I dumped the tanks once a week, and there was no clumps of toilet paper. Everything was broke down, so it was either par partly to do with the no, I wasn't using any of the RV septic juice. Usually, when I'm at the RV park, I don't use it. So just the agitation of the flushing itself or just breaking up inside of the tank or flushing the toilet, uh, the paper broke up so we had no issues. We're actually boondocking right now for our first week out so we haven't um, went to the dump station with that. But I'm not worried about it. It's not like it's gonna clog up or anything. Um, if there is an issue, we'll let you know, of course. Wash away!